Good morning, everyone, and welcome to lesson number 78 for today. So I'll give everyone that minute or so to get the notification that I am live. And while we do that, let's do a review of lesson number 77. I am entitled to miracles. So remember, a miracle is nothing more than a shift in perception from fear to love. We are entitled to miracles because of what we are. We are beings of light and love. We can have that shift in perception because it is our natural right. All we're doing is just going back to the truth of who we are, which is why we are entitled to that shift and to that change. Now remember that shift and change is not meant for us to do alone. It will be given to us by the Holy Spirit. It will shift our minds from fear to love, but first we have to recognize that we're in fear so that we can really make that move back to love. So that was our quick little review of lesson number 77. So we're gonna move on to lesson number 78. Let miracles replace all grievances. Perhaps it is not yet quite clear to you that each decision that you make is one between a grievance and a miracle. And I absolutely love that first sentence because it's telling us that no matter what we do, we're always choosing between love or fear a miracle or a grievance. It doesn't really leave any area of like gray. It says, here's what you're making. Either you're going for a grievance, meaning a judgment, or you're going towards the miracle, which means you're remembering your oneness. So either the grievance is that separation and miracles are oneness is how I like to look at it. Each grievance stands like a dark shield of hate before the miracle it would conceal. And as you rise, or as you raise it up before your eyes, you will not see the miracle beyond. Yet, all the while, it waits for you in light. But you behold your grievance instead. Today we go beyond the grievances to look upon the miracle instead. We will reverse the way you see by not allowing sight to stop before it sees. We will not wait before the shield of hate, but lay it down and gently lift our eyes in silence to behold the Son of God. He waits for you behind your grievances, and as you lay them down, he will appear in shining light where each one stood before. For every grievance is a block to sight, and as it lifts, you see the Son of God where he has always been. He stands in light, but you were in the dark. Each grievance made the darkness deeper, and you could not see. Today we will attempt to see God's Son. So with all of that, really what it was saying is that when we hold a grievance against someone, when we hold a judgment against someone, what we're doing is we're basically holding up uh, our hand and covering our eyes and saying, it's so dark in here, I can't see the truth. Well, you can't see the truth because you are so focused on the grievance, so focused on what that person did to you or perceived or that you perceive that they did to you. Uh, okay, we will not leave ourselves be blind to him. We will not look upon our grievances. So is the seeing of the world reversed. As we look out towards truth and away from fear, we will select one person you have used a target for your grievance and lay that grievance aside and look at him. Someone perhaps you fear or, and even hate. Someone you think you love who angered you. Someone you call a friend but whom you see as difficult at times or hard to please, demanding, irritating, or untrue to the ideal he should accept as his according to the role that you have set up for him. You know the one to choose. His name has crossed your mind already. 
he will be the one of whom we ask God, God's Son, be shown to you, through seeing him behind the grievances that you have held against him, you will learn that you lay hidden while you saw him not. Is there, I see why you saw him not, is there in everyone and can be seen. He who was enemy is more than friend when he is freed to take the holy role the Holy Spirit has assigned to him. Let him be savior unto you today, such as his role in God's, your father's plan. Our larger practice period for today will see him in this role. You will attempt to hold him in your mind first as you now consider him. You will review his faults, the difficulties you have had with him or her or them. You will review his faults and difficulties you have had, okay, the pain he has caused you, his neglect, and all the little and larger hurts he gave. You will regard his body with its flaws and better points as well, and you will think of his, mis of his mistakes and even of his sins. Let us ask him who knows the Son of God in his reality and truth that we may look on him a different way and see our Savior shining in the light of the true forgiveness given on to us. And so remember, when it comes to forgiveness, there are three levels of forgiveness. I guess we could say there's level zero, which is arrogance. I'm so spiritual, so I'm going to forgive you. Level one, victimhood. I forgive you, but you still did something terrible to me and you're still a terrible person. Then level two, which or that's level two. Then level three, which is uh, compassion. You know, I see you were in a bad place. I was in a bad place. Okay, let's forgive this. Let's move on with our lives. And then true forgiveness, which is I forgive you because in truth you have done nothing wrong. And that is one of the hard, that is very different from our concept of forgiveness. You know, we're used to, okay, let's, I want to move on with my life. I forgive you. We're saying in truth, you did nothing wrong to me. And that can be very triggering for a lot of people. I mean, like, yes, you did. You know, you hurt me. You did this. We're seeing beyond that where we are remembering that they are not the body. They are not the behaviors. Yes, they or they did the behaviors. Yes, they, you know, did the, they said the thing. They did the thing. But that is not the truth of them. And that can be very triggering for a lot of people. And that can actually be something it's hard to do because we're still so convinced that it's just a body, that they're just that body, that that behavior is them and will always be them and it can never be different. We ask him in the holy name of God and of his son as the whole, to see him holy as himself. Let me behold my savior in this one you have appointed as the one for me to ask to lead me to the holy light in which he stands that I may join him. The body's eyes closed and you, as you think of him who grieved you, let your mind be shown the light in him beyond the grievance. What you have asked, you cannot, cannot be denied. Your Savior has been waiting long for his. He would be free and make his freedom yours. The Holy Spirit leans from him to you, seeing no separation in God's Son. And what you see through him will free you both. Be very quiet now and look upon your shining Savior. No dark grievances obscure the light, the sight of him. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to express through him the role God gave him that you might be saved. God thanks you for these quiet times today in which you laid the image aside and look upon the miracle of love the Holy Spirit showed you in their place. The world and heaven join in thanking you for not one thought of God must, must rejoice as you are saved 
and all the world with you. We will remember this thought throughout the day and take the role assigned to us as a part of God's plan for salvation and not our own. Temptation falls away when we allow each other, when we allow each one we meet to save us and refuse to hide his light behind our grievances. To everyone you meet and to ones you think of or remember from the past, allow the role of the Savior be given that you may share it with him for you both and all the sightless ones as well we pray let miracles replace all grievances so that is today's lesson so we are to take one person for our longer practice period that we hold a grievance against and this is how i like to do this practice you don't have to do it this way but this is how i found it to be useful for me because i'm a visual person so it's just closing your eyes, visualizing that person. Like it said, it or you probably already know the person who you want to work on. So you see that person as they are. Then you can put little thought bubbles around them or a little, you know, just the words of what they have done or maybe the pictures of what they have done to you around that image of their body. Then what we can do is we step through that visage. We step through that illusion because that's what it is. And we see the light within. We see that beautiful light within them. You know, realize that they are the light. Realize that you are the light. Then you combine those two lights together and you shine upon that projection. So that means all of those words disappear. Maybe that image becomes golden. Maybe you like to see the visage of Christ come over that person. Maybe you like to see a halo. Maybe you like to see angel wings. Maybe you just like to see them bathed in golden light. And then you just simply say to yourself that, you know, they are forgiven, that you are forgiven, that we are free, or that I am free, you are free, we are free. And that's really just about it. Just forgiving them, seeing them now as your savior, seeing them as the truth of who they are, seeing that light within them and just doing that today. So that can be something that you work on. And then, of course, all throughout the day, let miracles replace all grievances just throughout the day. You can even use that when you're tempted to start to judge someone, when something comes up for you, you know, something, even if it's just a fearful thought, miracles replace all grievances in my mind. And you can go into your own mind and you can use that prayer that we've used before to begin to forgive yourself for that fearful thought. So that is today's lesson, and I will see you all this evening.